This is Janet Defoe and Ron Davis with another research update for you. But first, I'd like to just say happy holidays and happy new year to all of you. Um, this research update is specifically about the new paper called Catalytic Antibodies May Contribute to Demyelinization in Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. And this paper is with Mike Jensen as the main author and Ron and some other people and there's been a lot of interest in this paper and a lot of questions and so uh, the people at OMF asked us to make a video that they could show to answer people's questions. So first I'd just like to um, ask Ron to briefly summarize the paper a little bit. Well. <clears throat> We were aware that uh, in MS, the, uh, some, some of the antibodies can actually cleave, uh, that is, break down the myelin sheath. It acts as an enzyme and just, instead of just binding. Uh, and we were interested in this because uh, we, we have talked to a number of patients that were originally diagnosed with MS and then the doctor said, no, you don't have MS, you have ME-CFS instead. One of those patients brought us a compound um, <coughs> called Copaxone, which is a treatment for MS. And she said it actually helped her a lot. And that was during when she was diagnosed with MS. She became allergic to it because it is a protein and had to stop using it. And after that, her doctor told her she didn't have MS, she had ME-CFS instead. So, so she, it helped her with her ME symptoms, you're so, saying? So it must have helped her with her ME-CFS symptoms. Anyway, she brought the compound to us and said, uh, this has helped me a lot, I don't understand why, and maybe you could do some research on it. And that's what stimulated us to, to do this. Um, the compound is very expensive, but we looked up the patents and realized how they made it, and so we made some ourselves. And we have been using that in, in a, a number of our experiments. So that was the start of this, and uh, then we decided to see whether or not we could uh, identify cleavage of the myelin sheath. So we did an extensive purification of the uh, antibody from patients. Uh, these are patients that clearly have had MECFS, and we went through a pretty extensive purification of the antibody con concerning that we may have some contaminants. And then on incubating that antibody with uh, a preparation of a myelin sheath protein, uh, we found that it would actually cleave it into a specific pattern, and you can see that uh, pattern uh, produced. And that's in the paper. Uh, we also uh, had some serum from an MS patient, and uh, we used the same experiments and side by side, and the cleavage pattern looked identical. So we concluded that uh, the antibody from the MECFS patients is capable of cleaving, cleaving the myelin sheath. We then did a lot of controls. Uh, to make sure that it was very specific and, uh, and using a, a, a number of other pure proteins to see if it would cleave them. It did not. Uh, and then we also looked to see whether Copaxone, which inhibits that cleavage activity in MS, would inhibit the cleavage activity that we're seeing, and it did. So that suggests strongly that this is a uh, that the antibodies from an MECFS patient is, are, are virtually identical to the antibodies that are found in MS patients. Now, one, uh, I want to make sure that at the beginning of this, uh, this is not a certified clinical test that you have MS. Uh, the way we do this has not been approved by the FDA, um, and that's a, a long process. But it, it is information that uh, some patients may want to check that out with a, a, a legitimate approved uh, MS test. 
uh, we found about half the patients had uh, these antibodies. So thank you. I, I have um, a list of questions here. Uh, the first one says, um, this happens in MS as well. How is it different? I think you might have answered that I already. I almost answered that. As far as we can tell, it's the same thing. Okay. Would this explain the symptom of cognitive decline? Uh, well, you, in terms of the definition that you're using for cognitive decline, what you might expect to see is a similar problems that are found in MS patients. What definition are you talking about? Whatever definition I use for a cognitive decline in an MS patient. Uh, there may be specific things about it that uh, hallmark the MS type uh, behavior. I think there's some good treatments for MS and that's one reason why we pursued this. Um, and would those treatments work on uh, an MS patient if they have a test to show they have MS as well? So I didn't understand your answer about cognitive decline. Would this explain the symptom of cognitive decline in CFS patients, ME-CFS? Well, the problem is you're using the cognitive decline that uh, may be typical of an ME-CFS patient, and that may not be identical. Uh, so, but the question is, could it explain MECFS cognitive decline? Well, it's only ha it's only present in half. So, uh, you'd have to look at this in terms of is the cognitive decline you find in some MS MECFS patients also have the antibody for MS? Okay, I'm just gonna push this a, a little bit farther. Yeah. In the ones where it is true, could it explain the cognitive decline that they experience? Uh, well, they could just explain the cognitive decline that is typical of an MS patient. Okay. That's the problem. Okay. Um, okay, next question. Is the breakdown of myelin basic protein irreversible? I don't know the answer to that. Um, it might be rebuilt, but uh, I don't know how effective that is. Uh, and the best thing to do is to try to prevent it from happening. Um, okay. Are these results found on a standard MRI? Uh, I think you see uh, uh, various types of spots in the, in the MRI that indicate uh, degradation of, of the myelin sheath. I'm not certain of that. If patients have normal MRI results, does that mean that they don't fit this subset? Uh, if it was done under the same conditions that you would see uh, the effects of, of MS, then yes. Uh, how does this finding enhance or change the existing science? Well, I think it changes a number of things. One is that uh, if this is true, and it has to, and again, I'd have to emphasize that ours is not a, a FDA approved diagnostic test, but uh, if it is the case that you get a test for this at a, at a, a special physician that can uh, understand and treat MS and finds that you have MS, then uh, you could undergo treatment and that treatment may help you. Uh, one of the problems we faced when we, before we even did these experiments, we were curious to see whether or not the patients could actually have MS in addition to MECFS, and I talked to a number of MS specialists, and they said, no, 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 you can't have both of those at the same time. And <laughs> I, I, I said, why? Well, you, it, it, it's, you know, it's happening by a it, it started by a viral infection, and uh, you're not going to get two different diseases from that viral infection. Uh, what I'm do very, you think of that idea? I think it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's pretty uh, clear. So, um, I'm hoping that some patients will try to figure this out and uh, and and uh, and also report any results if they feel that they can. Where uh, would they report that? Uh, well, they can probably report it to your Open Medicine Foundation where this is reported. But that's a good way to disseminate it to other people. Or they could send it to me so that Ron can hear about it. I would like to hear about it. Yes. So you guys mostly know how to contact me on Twitter or Facebook or email. 
janet.dafo at gmail.com. Let me know, um, and I'll get the information to Ron. Okay, so you've sort of talked about this a little bit, but talk a little bit about treatment. What would the path to treatment look like? Well, it would be the current treatments that are that are used in MS, and there's a there's a number of those treatments. Are those effective? Aren't people? Is it it hard to treat MS? I think they are. Uh, at least it slows down the uh, the degradation of the, uh, and also you, you you in MS you can actually lose your ability to use your arms and legs and stuff. Uh, your, your motion control can be affected. Uh, it's possible that the amount of antibody that is present in MECFS patients is not as high as it is in, uh, in as a MS, and it's you're not you're not getting as much damage because uh, our experiments were putting in a certain amount of antibody. Uh, this is all in a test tube reaction, so it, it may not mimic what's happening in the body. Okay, well, are, are you planning to pursue this any further? Uh, I think the next step to see is really to find some patients and see if um, they respond to treatment. What treatment? The, whatever the MS treatment is. Oh, so instead of anecdotal evidence, actually look for MS patients yes. and, and then do we, a study. Uh, and we could get together with some uh, clinicians that are doing that with the patients and we could confirm uh, uh, our test. Is there any uh, molecular testing like Mike did for further study that doesn't involve patients except for their blood? Um, well, one of the things we are experimenting on is the, is the copaxone. And uh, since we can make copaxone, we can change the copaxone. And uh, one of the possibilities is to uh, make smaller fragments of the copaxone. And uh, if you make smaller fragments of the copaxone, it may not be quite as, it might still bind to the antibody, but it might not be as antigenic, and you might may not become allergic to it. Also, it, it, you can absorb uh, small peptides uh, under the tongue. And so if the, uh, but I suspect the injections that are used are not, uh, are not very deleterious. They're using, though they're using a very tiny needle and, and people seem to be very comfortable doing that. Uh, the, uh, there's a number of treatments where you have to inject it like in, in your, on your stomach. And uh, they don't seem to be bothered that much. So, But it is something else to consider is to try to reduce the antigenic properties of the copaxone so it will continue to be used. This is an old drug, but it does seem to work. For what? Or MS. Ah, okay. So, do you have any final comments about the study? Well, it does. Uh, it does put a hole in the uh, idea that you only have one di one disease at a time, and uh, the possibilities are that with a viral infection, you can get an autoimmune disease in addition to MECFS. And so it's possible that uh, there are other uh, autoantibodies that are present in, in patients um, that also cause symptoms, and maybe they're treatable. What can they possibly mean when they say you can't have two diseases at once? I mean, I've had cancer and a cold at the same time. Well, they're so that's not what they mean, no, right? No, they're meaning that it was triggered by the same 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 viral infection. Oh. And I suspect that that is possible. And we know that there are autoantibodies in most of the patients. Um, they may not be doing much harm to you. Uh, and also my guess is that if we can figure out the how to shut down MECFS, uh, you'll shut down the autoantibodies as well. Well, that sounds like a good place to end this. Do you have anything to add about, about it? Well, I think I think this uh, MECFS is some major circuit, uh, control circuit in the body, and uh, it, it's probably happening in a number of other cases, a number of other diseases, uh, where those diseases don't look the same as MECFS, 
but that could possibly be treated in the same way. So, uh, MECFS is a very complicated disease, and that's why uh, almost nobody works on it. And that's, I think, also why NIH is not spending any money on it. It's too complicated to be solved, I suspect, is what they think. Much money. They are spending some. Well, they say politically have to spend some. But, well, you said any. I just want to make yeah, sure we're yeah. not overstating the case yeah. here. Well, it's almost. <laughs> Even it's though al it's pretty pathetic. It's almost none. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think that's it about yeah. the study. And then I just want to acknowledge our shout out to our friends in Norway, because we were in Norway in, in uh, this summer and met with a lot of wonderful Norwegian MECFS patients and advocates. And we got these sweaters there, and we love them. They're so warm too. <laughs> happy holidays! Now we don't have to heat our house so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next update should be coming soon. Sending love to all of you. All right.